Well, hello, good morning and welcome back after the international break. Club football is back and the Foxes are in action away at Bristol City. Welcome along to Matchday Live with me, Dan Bates. We've got Wes Morgan and David Nugent alongside me here in the studio. A nice little change in the, the age of the guests, yeah. shall we say. I'm sure Jerry will be listening uh, from Bristol City. We'll have something to say about that a little bit later. Before we speak to these two, though, let's get all of today's team news as the Foxes aim to go back top of the championship this afternoon. Enzo Maresco has made three changes to the side that fought so hard at Stamford Bridge a couple of weeks ago. It's Hermanson who comes back in, Vardy uh, comes back in as well, as does James Justin. Callum Doyle, of course, missing out through suspension after picking up that red card. It's Hermanson in goal, Justin Fass, Bestergaard and Chaldry. Winks, Dewsbury Hall and Ndidi are the midfield three. Mavididi and Fatawu are either side of Jamie Vardy. If you've looked on the bench, you'll see there is a return for Ricardo. Fantastic to see him back on the bench. Hopefully we'll see him in action. Similar with Dennis Pratt as well. Elsewhere, it's Stelarsic, Cody, Albrighton, Inacho, Dakar, Yunus and Marcel. From a Bristol City point of view, a couple of familiar faces for these two in the studio. Um, we'll be potentially playing against Leicester. Certainly one of those starts in midfield, uh, Matty James, of course. The other on the bench, uh, Andy King. This is their 11. Then it's O'Leary, Robert Sticky, and Viner across the back three. Pring and Tanner are the wing backs. Knight and James in midfield with Twine and Mehmeti in behind Conway. Well, that's uh, all of the team news out of the way then. Let's uh, get into speaking to you two. Um, you're a regular now, yeah. as we've just been discussing uh, here with us. First on, one on the Fox team sheet. Sub, so yeah. you can uh, help Wes throughout this afternoon. You'll be fine. You? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you both doing? You good? Afternoon, go on. Yeah, yeah, all good, you know. Good to be here. Uh, it's been a while since I've been on the LCFC TV, um, but it's good to catch up with Nuge, it's been a while, and I obviously see your, your lovely face once again. <laughs> you definitely didn't want to see that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're a busy man at the moment, you, you seem to be everywhere, we, we can't grasp you down and, and keep you in here. Yeah, involved in lots of areas, lots of bits and bobs going off at the moment, so um, it's nice to keep busy, um, keep my eye on Leicester of course, um, watching the, the season and seeing how it goes, um, and obviously it's getting a bit, bit, bit of crunch time now, um, in a position where I don't know, a few months ago you wouldn't expect them to be in, but um, I feel the team's still strong enough and we'll see how it goes. Yes, and, and the less said about the golf for the both of you. Yeah, yeah the, don't want to talk about golf. Leave out there. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll talk about exactly what Wes was just saying mm -hmm. uh, in a moment, but it's a chance to, to go back top, isn't it? Playing first, that, that's an advantage. Yeah, it is. You know, we obviously three points off for grabs first and foremost. Uh, a chance to go above Leeds again. You know, we, you know, results recently haven't been the best, but you know, we've got a chance to put a bit of pressure back on the likes of switch and Leeds, and if they win today, you go above them and the pressure comes you know, with them come three o'clock. Uh, coming up uh, on the show this morning, uh, into this afternoon, we've got plenty to get through, of course. It seems like uh, ages, doesn't it, since the Foxes were last certainly in league action. Two weeks ago, they were in FA Cup action, weren't they? What a thriller that was in the FA Cup quarter-final. So very nearly taking Chelsea to extra time or even more. Uh, we'll look back at that. We'll hear from... Enzo Maresca and we'll take a closer look, of course, uh, at Bristol City themselves. Uh, we've just seen shots as well of, of the players and the management arriving uh, down at Ashton Gate, including some of the, the Bristol City players as well, including Matty James and Andy King, two, two players you obviously know very well and, and I'm sure we'll speak very fondly of. Yeah, you know, two great former teammates. You know, we had a great time together, you know, when we were all together in the changing room. You know, two, two different kind of kind of players, you know, Jamie wanted to get on the ball, you know, Kingy, you know, when I was here, used to try and get forward and support me when I was playing. So, you know, obviously Jamie's got a chance to put one over on his old team. Kingy would love to come on and contribute, but you know, it's down to the Leicester players to, you know, stop that and try and try and get three points. Yeah, um, like you said, two former teammates of ours, who spent, you know, a long, long time yeah. together, changing mm -hmm. room yeah. on the pitch, obviously. Uh, so we know, we know, we know those guys well, you know, and um, I'm sure going into that game, especially Jamo who's starting, definitely want to make an impression. Uh, Kingy will be keen to get on the yeah. pitch and show that, you know, he's still got a bit. Um, so, yeah, it's down to Leicester at the end of the day to, you know, get the points. They're in a position where, you know, it's, it's a must win in my eyes. Uh, so they'll, have, they'll be focused on their job and know what they need to do. 
go on. I was going to say, because it's two quick games in the Easter period as well, and obviously you've got another game coming up quick around, so massive six points up for grabs, and if we can get these two get back on form, it's just massive for the team to get six points, and hopefully the other teams will, will falter. Yeah, it's the early game on, on mm. Monday as well, Norwich at the home, of, of course, so there, there are two opportunities really to... To, to stake claims in in these early kickoffs across the weekend. Yeah, you definitely have to make the most of the kickoff. You know, you know the other teams are going to be watching to watching the game to see how they do. Um, hoping Leicester will, will trip up, but um, like I say, it's an opportunity for Leicester to put the pressure on on the other teams. You know, they could go back top, and all of a sudden the mindset of the other teams change. You know, there's like right, we can't we can't not lose the game, and it'll be interesting to see how they approach the game. It's, it's all about putting pressure into the teams. You know, do you, do you have to win this game? You know, as you said, Wes said that they're going to be watching this game you know, while they're getting changed in the change room, preparing for, the, for their game later on. So it's down for our players, you know, the players that are coming back into the team. You know, you got Will back, that, that midfield three is back together. It's been yeah. vital, you know, to get them back together and hopefully that will you know, show today. Yeah, I think that the headline team is, if you like, from a, a Leicester point of view, is, is on the bench. Ricardo being back in, Dennis Pratt back in on the bench as well. But particularly, let's concentrate on Ricardo, Wes, because we've seen... This season, Winks, Jewsbury Hall, and Didi, you add Ricardo into the mix in that midfield, has been so strong. And and maybe that, 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 that's been a potential reason as to why the form's just dipped slightly in, in the last few games. So to see Ricardo back is a, is a real bonus. Yeah, he's been key this season. You know, um, I'm not sure the other fullbacks can do exactly what Ricardo does. You know, the way he can step into midfield and he's comfortable, um, he's got the ability to kind of get on the ball and play. He's got the awareness around him to know when to play one touch, two touch. Um, and he's got the, the, the football brain to know when to get back into position to that right back slot um, and time his movement into midfield. So, you know, he's been key. It could be a reason for the form, but um, it's good to see him back. Yeah, he's, he's vital to the team, you know, because when he does go into midfield, it allows the likes of Kane, you know, Dewsbury Hall to get a bit further forward and Deeds to get further forward. You know, and then, then, then Winks and, and Ricardo are together. You know, in, in them two sitting is a, is a dangerous, dangerous partnership for anyone to deal with. And when he's back on the pitch, there's probably one one player short of being probably the best team that they can put out. So when when he's fitting and back into the team, I think Leicester can go on and really push on. Yeah, because you look at that that team, that eleven, and and that's capable of beating absolutely anybody, Wes, isn't it? In in this division, and hopefully we see that today, of course. Yeah, you know, they've shown the signs all season. You know. Um, Dominating games in possession, creating chances. Uh, when they got the full strength team out on the pitch, you know they, they could beat anyone. You know, and even players off the bench have made contribution. You know, at late, yeah, things have not gone the way we expected. Um, <coughs> maybe teams have figured out a little bit hard to to stop them, but they're still strong. Um, like I said, Ricardo coming back into or onto the bench that could feature. You know, is a big plus. Mm. Yeah, but that just the sub, the subs again. Look at, the, look at the strength of it. You got Coletti on there, Daka. You know, Cannon misses out. Unlucky for him. You know, with the four strikers. You know, Vard's coming back in. You know, we missed him past couple of games through injury. You know, so it's it's, it's a solid squad and went through a bit of a sticky patch. But you know, what a chance for early kickoff to put it back right. Hopefully so. It was an early kickoff uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this time in the FA Cup away at Chelsea, the Foxes battled so hard, particularly in that second half, but it did end uh, in heartbreak right at the very end of the game. Nicholas Jackson is running here at Vestergaard and he's beyond Vestergaard and he squares it to Kukurea who tops home and Chelsea open the scoring in this FA Cup quarter-final. Leicester lost the ball right down the other end of the pitch and Chelsea punished them. Kukurea with a tap-in from a couple of yards out. Meanwhile, here goes Gusto. Chelsea attacking down the right hand side, he's in acres of space, he crosses it to Mudrick who misses it, Sterling heavy touch but it's a penalty, Batawu, a judge to a foul, Raheem Sterling, Enzo Maresca turns and says no way, here comes Sterling, saved by Stelagic, how about the follow up, that's been blocked and then Saka's been fouled, Jakob Stelagic sends those 6,000 Leicester fans bonkers in the shed end, poor penalty, Excellent save. Leicester very much still in this cup quarter-final. Well, Vestergaard's been dragged out there and Sterling's in on goal. Raheem Sterling, oh, he's five wide. What a miss from Sterling. Chelsea played through the Foxes there and it looked for all the world like it would be two. He's on the ball here immediately though, Sterling. And he's in the box again, Raheem Sterling pulls it across and Cole Palmer sweeps home. Just as we go in to add it on time at the end, of the first half is that the crucial goal of the game Raheem Sterling makes up for his 
couple of misses with an excellent assist. Oh, oh dear, Sarsi here, that's going to be an own goal! <laughs> Unbelievable! An own goal from 30 yards out, the throw went to him, Patson Dacker closed him down, and <laughs> Dia Sarsi has walloped that into his own goal. And here's Mavadidi. He can run at Gusto here. He approaches the edge of the box, Steffi Mavadidi. Couple of step overs. What a shot! What a goal! It's absolutely fantastic! And from 2 0 down, Leicester are level. They're making more magic memories in the FA Cup against Chelsea. That was absolutely glorious from Mavadidi. He beat Gusto and then he's bent it beyond the goalkeeper. Chickamaker in the box. One, two, and Palmer is in. He's Wake with a couple of step overs, nudges away from Justin, shoots, deflected, and it's thrown in. And that is that. Nani Manuaka with a very fine individual solo goal. The second Chelsea sub to score. They are heading to Wembley. Leicester's FA Cup adventure ends. Well, very, very nearly uh, was that an FA Cup semi-final at Wembley, Wes, you've got great memories of playing uh, against Chelsea, particularly at Wembley uh, in the FA Cup, but it just wasn't to be, was it, a couple of weeks ago for the lads? Yeah, very entertaining game. Um, just very close. It was back and forth, you know, after those times in the game, thinking, yeah, this is in Leicester's bag, you're mm -hmm. going to come back and win. And then it swung towards Chelsea. Um, you know, it wasn't meant to be on the day, but put a great performance in. You know, we spoke about Mavadidi's goal there. You know, hopefully he used that bit of confidence from that goal to take it into the remaining games of the season, especially in today's game as well. Mm. I thought he was so unlucky. He'd been able to go 2 0 down as well to fight back. Obviously, got a bit of luck with the with the first goal, with the own goal, but that goal by Mavadidi, you know, when he's running at that pace with the step overs, he sees the defender couldn't cope with him. And, you know, Gusto is no slouch. You know, cuts inside and whips it in the far corner. Great finish there to get back into the game. And then obviously the sending off, you know, I thought it was a bit harsh. Mm. You know, obviously if a penalty was given, then obviously a yellow card, but then you review it and it's a foul. Goal scoring opportunity gets given a red. So he's quite unlucky with that, Callum. But again, you know, Chelsea were just pressuring them, weren't they? And, you know, got the goal and, and killed the game off. But, you know, to play, you know, a top Premier League side, you know, just miss out, you know, it was a great performance. Yeah, I think the manager took the positives mm. out of that game. Yeah. You know, there's lots of positives there. Yeah, um, the FA Cup runs over, uh, but Nike focus on the league. Yeah. Uh, it's been a good run, but yeah, there's lots of positives in there. You know, lots of individual performances and, and moments that the, the manager, I'm sure, will, will focus on and hopefully use that for the remaining games. Yeah, it's a good point, actually, that mm -hmm. the players that were involved and did so well that day, including, as we've just seen, obviously, the Mavadidi goal. Kieran Dewsbury Hall was brilliant again. Mm -hmm. Is it the sort of confidence boost, even though you lose the game, but to play that well against a side like Chelsea, you know that you can take that into your league form. Yeah, the, the performance was there. You know, it's just the goals we conceded, you know, late on, which we lost the game. You know, I can't I, I can't say Enzo, you know, blame the players for that. You know, they just played the Premier League side who were, you know, trying to fight to get into Europe. They might not be on the best form, but it was it was a chance to go there and try and win the game. We tried, we failed, and we, now we concentrate on the league. You know, our bread and butter, which is what the fans want, you know, get back into the Premier League. From from a confidence point of view going forward, Steffi Mavadidi, as, mm -hmm. as Wes rightly mentioned, hopefully we'll, we'll take some confidence from that. Great finish, wasn't it? Is, is that the type of goal that can lift you now for these final nine games of the season? I think that's what you want from your forward players, you know, being positive, getting on the ball, running at defenders, you know, making defenders make mistakes, you know, cutting inside, having shots off. You know, Fatu, you know, we've got two right foot playing on the left, right, and a right foot playing, a left foot playing on the right, so they both, both cutting in, have shots on a goal. You know, it's not ideal for the striker, you know, for crosses and stuff like that. But, you know, with Vards being in there now with the with the rebounds from the shots, you know, you know, it's where Vards wants to be in that six yard box, getting the rebounds, getting the tap ins and scoring goals and winning points. Yeah, I think um now, especially at this stage of the season, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the business end, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, if you look at Leicester's stats throughout the season, you know, always dominate possession, having lots of shots. Um but not getting that scoreline, you know, yeah, um, yeah. scoring 3-4 uh, mm -hmm. and just taking the game away from the opposition. So I think going into this final part of the season, I think the manager will look at the, especially the forward players, the attacking talent we've got to be more clinical, you yeah. know, make the most of the chances and, and punish them when you get them chances. We, we are making, creating the chances, as we said, you know, uh, we just, we go one nil up and then we seem to like just play our football and try and win the game at that, at that stage. But, you know, in the championship, if you make a mistake, you know, and, and the teams back into the games, so it's going it's to be a hard, hard graph for the rest of the game. So we need to take our chances more, you know, be really, 
you know, in front of goal, you know, score one, two, three, kill the game off, and then start playing your football when the game's already won. Speak, speaking of taking your chances and speaking of Jamie Vardy, it was him that was on the score sheet twice a, a against Hull a couple of weeks ago. The first <laughs> one from the spot, the second one a really tidy finish. Again, he, he's the sort of player now that will be huge for Leicester head, heading into this final running. Yeah, he, he's in great goal scoring form. You know, he, he scored in his you know, previous four games now, and uh, <laughs> here he is winding the fans up again. But, you know, a great, great pen again. You know, the, you know, the pace on the on the shot there. The keeper got a hand to it, but you know, he managed to get in the back of the goal. And you know, I like the second goal as well. You know, good movement. You know, in behind and and, and a great finish. But yeah, he's he's going to be vital. You know, he, he's he's massive for this club, and you know, if he can get in, you know, carry on this goal scoring form. You know, I'm sure Leicester will, you know, will be in that top two come the end of the season. Yeah, I think uh, Nigel know much better than me. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get limited chances, you know, you have to take your chances when you get them. Um, and he's shown this season, you know, coming off off the bench or or starting, he might not have much involvement in the game, mm -hmm. but he gets his chances and he does score. Mm -hmm. You know, so he, he's definitely still got it. Yeah. Um, I think his goal to chances ratio is probably one of the best. Yeah, I, I've yeah. seen some stats, mm -hmm. so uh, you know, it's fantastic to have someone like that on your side um, starting again. You know, and I think the manager will be looking at him definitely to try to get the goals for the team. Yeah, well, he's the one you want on the end of it as well. If you had a pick of any four strikers going through on goal, you're picking boards, aren't you, to go through and, and put the ball away. So it's vital that he's back in the team. Yeah, I mean, you obviously <coughs> both know him very well. You've played with him just a couple of, of years ago, of, of course, for a lot of your career, a lot of his career. Just how much does he love that, that moment, scoring goals? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you see his celebrations, yeah, yeah. Like how much he loves it. You know, um, for the whole time I've known him, uh, he really enjoys the goal <laughs> celebrations and yeah, the scoring. Yeah. I think it's more the fans, you know, I think the more the fans give him stick, the better he plays. Yeah. It's, it's great for us, you know, because yeah. I think he relishes that and he, he, it makes him want to score even more. And when yeah. he does score, the first thing he does is run to the opposition yeah, yeah. and say, so what are you saying? It's, it's, what cups yeah. his ear and, and it's, things it's, like it spares that. You know? him on, it? Like, it, it spares him on, doesn't it? It spares him on so much and I don't think the fans just didn't do anything. That goal there, the Bristol City penalty, he runs the, the length of the pitch yeah, to, yeah, celebrate just, just to celebrate. Yeah, that's what, that's, what he, that's what he does. You know, and, uh, you see some of the finishes here. You know, whether he's coming off the bench or starting a game, he'll get a chance and he will score. It's just getting the ball to him. You know, he's always, he's always fishing about in the, in the six yard box. Mm. You know, he's, he's missed chances, but you know, if he gets another one straight after, you know, he puts the ball away. You know, so he, he's vital. You know, uh, he's done it for, what, 10 years now, you know, scoring goals for Leicester. And, you know, hopefully he can get a few more now, you know, before the end of the season, finishes and, you know, and get Leicester back into the Premier League where they belong. Yeah, again, Wes, knowing him, surely it will give him immense motivation, whether or not we know his contract obviously runs out at the end of the summer, we don't know what might happen, but to, to if it is him signing off, to, to be the player that drives and scores the goals that drive Leicester into the, the Premier League again, that, that will surely give him a huge motivation. Listen, I think you can see the passion in his face, you know, when he scores, how much it means to him, you know. I know he would have been upset with, with Leicester dropping down um, last season into the Championship, you know, and uh, I think whatever happens next season, if he finishes his career at Leicester with taking them back into the Premier League, you know, it's, it's a fantastic way to sign off. And yeah, I, I think he really, he's really looking, really determined to, you know, get Leicester back up and um, I can see the passion that he's carrying at the moment. Mm. Yeah, but did you see that he st he still got it, you know. So if he does get promoted, I think that'll just want to spare him on even more to like want to play, you know, one more <laughs> season in the Premier League. You know, like the last couple of years now, the previous managers have tried to get a striker to replace him, you know, because mm -hmm. you know he's coming to the end, and I think everyone's failed so far, haven't they? <laughs> you know, no one could have like replace him, you know. So for Bar just to step down at the end of the season, I don't think he'll want to. I think he'll want to play on, and you know, if, if they do get to the Premier League, it might be a bit different if they, if they stay in the Championship, but definitely get promotion. I think he'll want to, you know, sign him. Sign on again and, you know, maybe as the fans say, 10 more years, isn't it? <laughs> 10 more years. I doubt, I doubt we'll be able to do that, but he's, he's still got the legs. You can see his runs in behind, he's sharp still. Mm. You know, he's still got that little burst of pace to get in behind defenders and, and there's the cuteness of the finishes as well. And judging from those celebrations that we've seen all season, particularly <laughs> away at Hull in, in his last league game, I mean, he, why would you want to, 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 to stop doing that? Mm. Yeah, you know, um, he's a talisman for this club. He's, you know, through the... Thick and thin since I've been there, and, and while he's still there, and I've left, you know, I can see he's uh, he's, he's determined to drive the club on, um, he's giving it his all. Uh, yeah, he probably won't be happy that he's on the bench sometimes, and he's not a regular 
starter as, as he used to be. Um, but I think that just comes with age, you know. I'm sure he's mature enough to understand the situation. And when he gets his opportunities, he's taking it to one. What Enzo says, don't he, as well, if, if he tells Jamie he's not playing, he, he's never happy. He always wants to play, you know, do the best for the team. And, you know, uh, no, I, th I think the fans rely on him, you know, the players rely on him. The managers now rely on him to, you know, try and get less over the line. And there's no better feeling than wanting everybody, you know, wanting everybody to... Well, to do well and, and, and perform on the pitch, and that's what he's been doing recently. And we know there are options now on, on the bench as well, in, mm -hmm. in Ian Asho, in Pats and Dhaka, and, well, seven goals this season for Dhaka. We know he has been able to step up in, in certain moments, and if the game is tight, if Leicester are maybe one up, or if it's one all, for example, with 20 minutes to go, put Dhaka on, put Ian Asho on, you've got a real chance there. Yeah, his legs on the bench, you know, and his options. Um, so the manager will say to Vardy, listen, just give me as much as you got. Um, get into the second half. If we start to blow up, we can, we've can. we got plenty of ammunition on the bench. Um, and it's proven, you know, like you said, Dakar, he's proven this season. You know, he's got goals. in Iñacho, you know, he's had a good start to the season. Um, he's there. You've got Cannon. You know, it's about, there's lots of options forward attacking play. So um, I think the, the manager will be, you know, looking at, at Vardy, how long he can keep going before he makes the changes. Yeah, that'll be it. I think it'll be, it's usually 70 to 75 minutes in it where, where Vard usually starts to tire. But when you've got the firepower of Dakar, Ian Accio, we you said Cannon, who didn't even make the bench today. You've got Ricardo on the bench as well. You know, so there's options there. You know, he's going to use them. All depends how the game's going. If the, if the game's easily won, you know, by 60, 70 minutes, you can, you can see him making changes. But if it's a close game, then I think you've got to keep your best players on the pitch to try and, you know, try and win the game. Yeah, all ahead of that big game, of course, uh, on Easter Monday as well. We're concentrating, though, on this one this afternoon <coughs> on Good Friday. Of course, as ever, the games are available to you on Fox's Hub. Uh, in certain territories, you can watch the game. It is available to get your game pass. All you need to do is head to lcfc.com slash Fox's Hub. If you want to listen to us, though, you can do that anywhere. Uh, you can get your Listen Live passes as well from the same place uh, on the uh, website, lcfc.com slash Fox's Hub. Right, let's hear from Enzo Maresca then. The Leicester City manager was asked in the week if the mentality has changed in the group, considering they're not top of the league for the first time since October. No, no, no. Before we were playing to win games, and we we continue we continue on that. As you said, we are one game on end. In this moment, the goal difference is Leeds uh, for Leeds. But uh, for me, if because of the amount of game in so short period, you don't have time to see the table in this moment. This moment, you have just to try to win games, and that's all. To give you credit, even when you were fourteen points clear of third place six weeks or so ago, you always said. That's not how this works. This isn't a PlayStation. What has made you so confident all along that this was never going to be just a runaway victory for you? First yeah. of all, because uh, it's already 25 years that I'm involved in football. So I know that the reality is not uh, uh, to win game with 10, 15 points ahead of the second one. And also because I respect Leeds, I respect Southampton, I respect Ipswich, and I know that until the end, they're going to be there with us. So the reason why, since we start, I always said, this is not the reality. What they have done is something incredible, is because it's the reality. And, I don't know, win, winning 19 of 23 games the first round was something not normal. And also in this moment, if Leeds, I think in the last 12 games, they won 11 and they drew one, Fantastic that they deserve to be where they are now with us. Finally, they often say that seasons can be not decided, but you go some distance to survive it, uh, deciding a season over the Easter weekend, up and down the leagues, because you have those two games in the space of four days, just like you have over Christmas, a lot of games in a short period of, of time. How crucial do you think the next four days are going to be for your football club? For me, it will be crucial until the end. And every game will be like a little bit, you know, like uh, when you win, you want to be there. If you drop points, you want to be there. Now, until the end, it will be a race. Sometimes you want to be up some, uh, uh, in front. Sometimes you want to be behind. But uh, the most important thing is that uh, the play continue to perform in the way they are performing every day, to be honest. Because I said many times, the games that we already played, they are there. But uh, also the game that uh, we analyze 
I think no one of them we deserve. Then football, it's football, you can lose the game, but no one of them we deserve. We finish and we say we deserve to lose this game. I don't think we deserve to lose any of the game that we lost, but it's football, can happen. Now it's just a focus about each game, try to win, try to reach our target and go home. That was Enzo Maresca there, repeating really the, the, the same message that he has done all season, that Leicester are concentrating on what they do. It doesn't matter what anyone else does. They've got their target and, and, and they want to hit it. Is that something you've got to do? You've got to concentrate on their, own, on their own games? You know, don't care about what any other teams do. You win your game today and then you can relax and then go and watch the results on the, on the couch and watch them come in. Hopefully they both you know, get beaten. That would be ideal for Leicester. But, you know, the two games coming up, Six points up for grabbing in four days. It's, it's a big part of the season. And if we can get six points, it'll be a massive, you know, ambition for Leicester to, you know, to push on and, and try and win them the, the previous games left in the league. Mm. Yeah, his final comments there summarised it very well. You know, <laughs> their job is to, you know, turn up, play well, win the game, yeah. hit the target, uh, go home. <laughs> yeah. Not much more you could add to that. You know, um, focus is very much, we, we're the best team. We've just got to show how good we are, win the game and get promoted. And, and that's been the talk all season. Even, like, just even if, they, if they don't perform well, just, just win the game. You know, do your job, win the game. Even if it's a bad performance, yeah, the end goal is to get three points. That is it. If you play well, brilliant win and win the game, brilliant. If you play bad, win the game, it's even better. He always speaks really well, doesn't he, Enzo Maresca? And you feel like the message he's saying to the press is probably the exact same one he's saying behind closed doors at Seagrave. Yeah, probably, you know, very much the same. You know, I've been fortunate to meet him a couple of times, you know, and the way he comes across that relaxed attitude in front of the cameras for the media, you know, is the way he came across to, to me when I spoke to him. And um, it's quite refreshing, you know, it's quite nice to, to speak to someone on a level, you know, not getting too bogged down with the, the pressures of football um, and the targets on that the, the club expect. Because um, he knows, you know, they're in the driving seat. You know, it's in their hands. If they slip up, you know, it'll be their fault. They're in a position now where you've just got to think, let's just win the game. You know, we've got to win the game. Like Nuz said, even if it's an ugly game, ugly performance, as long as you come, with the free, come away with the three points, at this stage of the season is most important. Is he someone you'd have liked to have played under? <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, Ball it's playing centre-half. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> you know what? I, I think probably for me, you know, manager, a good manager is, is man management. You know, and you can see there's probably he's got a big squad, a very talented squad, and there's a lot of players that you could argue could be starting. Mm -hmm. um, good managers will make sure the whole squad, not just the eleven, are happy and satisfied, and will get their chance. And I think I'll get on with him definitely in that in, in that sense. You know, where I might not be playing, I might be starting, but the way he handles me and, and the team is most important. Mm. Yeah, it's all about the team. It's not about just the one players who, who don't play, but. You know, we've seen early on in the season, he used to make a lot of changes during games, didn't he? Like all previous games, he'd make four changes one game, yeah. five changes the next. But now I think he's got a settled midfield. He's got a settled front line from three. And three out of the four centre-offs and the goalkeeper are pretty solid. So I think he's got, he knows the strongest squad now, but he's, he's doing well. Like in the cup runs, he'll give the players who haven't been playing game time as well. So he's worked out quite well, but now it's down to the nitty-gritty. He wants to play his strongest team every every game now and try and win the game. Yeah, it's interesting, obviously, in that season, whereas it was a very much a settled team, wasn't it? You almost knew pretty much, certainly 10 of the 11, or all, all 11 pretty much for every game. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I look back and reflect on it, I think in terms of injuries, we don't have much injuries. Mm -hmm. We're thinking, right, we need to make changes. We've got someone out for one or two months. Um, it was pretty much a settled team and it makes it a lot easier when you're winning. You yeah, don't need to make yeah, changes. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You know, obviously you have to keep the whole squad satisfied in some sense on some way. But at the same time, you know, if, you, if you've got a team that's winning and there's no injuries, performing well, it makes life as a manager a lot easier. Mm. Uh, right. Speaking of ball playing at centre house, we've got one of those in position uh, at Ashton Gate because oh, Jerry Taggart uh, is on co-commentary for us. Um, good. Well, yeah. Now, good afternoon to you, Jerry. I think that's one of the nicest things I've said to you. Yeah, that's probably the best introduction. <laughs> uh, I'm probably the one that's most untrue about me. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for that, Dan. I've just grown half an inch. <laughs> Yeah, because it was a late call, wasn't it, having to go all the way to Bristol, but you've made it, haven't yeah. you? It looks like a nice day as well. It is, the sun's come out, it's been raining, 
on the way down here. Uh, four hour journey, by the way, to get here this morning. Thanks you two, <laughs> you two in the dog out with your legs crossed, you know, pizza on the way, I take it. You enjoy that. Mackey's breakfast as well, Jerry, don't forget that one. <laughs> and a Mackey's yeah. breakfast, well, there you go. You but yeah, there. but yeah, the sun is shining, the pitch looks in really good condition as well, which uh, is, a, is a plus. It's a big game, Jerry, isn't it? Yeah. Listen, they're all massive games now. Uh, I'm not going to use the cup final an analogy that a lot of people do, but I think that the players understand that. You know, a lot of the players have had a, a couple of weeks off. <clears throat> uh, some of the players obviously have been on international duty. And so they've had a lot of time basically to ponder what's about to happen in, in the run-in. And you've got nine games <clears throat> and effectively, you know, a month, just over a month. Uh, and there's, you know, they're still in prime spot. That the squad itself is, is obviously looking a lot more healthier. With you know, Wilfred and Didi starting today, Ricardo Pereira on the bench, Jimmy Vardy starting today. You know, so three key players uh, back in the squad, stroke team, and hopefully that will be enough over the coming month. Yeah, because it's been, what, three weeks, Jerry, since that, that whole game, the last one in the league, Jamie Vardy scoring twice. We've already spoken yeah. about that this afternoon, but it, it was an important point, that one, and and since then, we've seen Leicester have been knocked off top of the league, so it's it's a big game for them to maybe make a statement this afternoon. Yeah, I, I think so, and i tell you what, what an important point that was. What a game that was at all. Hull were fantastic on the day, and Leicester did really well to come back into it. Uh, straight after conceding that second goal. So that was a big point away from home. Uh, so, yeah, it's all about learning from the mistakes, which there obviously was against Hull. Uh, I think the conditions today are better than the word Hull, i.e. the pitch in particular is a bit better. It's not as blustery here as it was at Hull either. Uh, so hopefully that will play in to the hands. But, yeah, it's all about focusing... You've got a month, basically. You've got a month to, to tune in and get going. And that's basically it. Uh, right, final question, Jerry. You know what it is. It's your favourite question uh, during your co-commentary. What was the uh, the food on offer for you oh. this afternoon? Well, I have, luckily, you know, there was some left by the time I got here. And it was gammon with chips, uh, and garlic and oh, herb. You know, there was scrambled eggs, so I didn't have any of that. Nope. Tomatoes, garlic and herb tomatoes, which were beautiful. <laughs> and uh, I've just got myself. My phone is actually leaning up a, up against a nice cup of tea here. So anyway, just because it was that nice, the gammon, I had two slices of it. <laughs> of course, <it> did. <laughs> and one to take home as well, Jerry. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll hear from you uh, again just before uh, kick off your on code commentary duty alongside Chris Parrott this afternoon. For more insight, like uh, what food's on offer at away grounds, we've got plenty more for you uh, on Fox's Hub uh, at the moment and uh, in keeping, if you like, with the theme of ball playing centre halves. There's a really good um, sort of mini documentary look at Ben Nelson uh, and his journey from the academy into the first team that's available for you. Uh, a legacy for Kun Vishai as well, that longer documentary, absolutely fantastic. Where's one of the contributors uh, to that? Um, speaking about the, the legacy left, of course, by Kun Vishai. Uh, there's an International Women's Day feature featuring a number of uh, elite level uh, athletes there. And uh, the latest episode of Leicester's The Place, the podcast uh, with Muzzy Is It, also available for you wherever you get your podcasts. You can also watch that uh, on YouTube uh, or on Fox's Hub uh, as well. Uh, Joey made a, go a good point about, well, he didn't want to say it, the cliche of, of the nine cup finals, but you kind of get the sense that any other season, the amount of points Leicester are on, it's probably a nice, comfortable run into the end of the season. Mm. It won't be that this year. We know that now. No, no, we, we spoke earlier about the likes of Leeds and Ipswich. You know, you expect one of them to drop off, more, more so Ipswich obviously coming up from League One, but they're running into a bit of form now, as with Leeds. So you've got to expect them teams to win. So it's your job in these early kickoffs to go out there and put performance on and win the game knowing that you got to think in your head that Leeds and Ipswich and Southampton as well are, are going to win their game so you have to concentrate on your game win the game and, and do your job 
there's nine, nine games to go. It's not many. All yeah. in April as well. Maybe two and one again. Be in the May, so you, you almost think a bit of psychology might come into play with some mm -hmm. mind games. Um, Leicester taking advantage in the early kickoff. Mm -hmm. You know, can they put pressure on the other teams? How would they handle the the, the pressure if Leicester do win? Yeah. You know, are they going to crumble? You know, and I think the games on Monday as well. You know, mm -hmm. it's another another one of those psychological kind of like right. Can we put the pressure on the others? You know, how would they crumble? You know, because. You see the strangest things happen, especially with the running towards the end yeah. of the season. You've got teams at the bottom that need to win uh, mm -hmm. to stay up, so they fight for their lives. The teams at the top, they want to get promoted. <laughs> you can't predict results. Well, you the, cannot I, predict results. I think the lead, the, the games, or the, the league, sorry, are squashed. Even like the middle middle teams are still like looking below them, yep. thinking, oof, like, we still get relegated here, so they still got something to play for. Yep. When you play these middle middle league teams, you think, oh, they're not going to be bothered. We're yeah, they're off on holiday already. Yeah, they're off on no. holiday, but not this time, because everyone's like so tight. Yeah. Everyone's just looking over the shoulders, either down below or above, thinking we can make the playoffs. So it's going to be one hell of a running. Yes, Bristol City, one of those teams that you could argue are in that, that yeah, middle part yeah. of the table with little to play for, if you like. But you look at it, they're only eight points uh, above the, the relegation zone and what, um, just over, well, 13 away from the playoffs. So they put on a big run. You never know what might happen. <clears throat> Let's take a closer look at uh, Bristol City then. As uh, James Piercy uh, from the Bristol Post tells us what to expect uh, from firstly the fans and the players at Ashton Gate today. There's a lot of anxiety, a lot of anguish, a lot of anger, um, and a lot of disappointment, a lot of frustration with the supporters. Um, I think within the team, whilst they're sort of projecting um, that they're not a million miles away from sort of getting out of this slump, which I do agree to some extent, ultimately, well, sorry, no, I do agree with, uh, I do think there's, there's a sort of a bit of a lack of confidence and belief in the team at the moment, but just because of the weight of the defeats, kind of, with all due respect to teams like QPR, Cardiff, Sheffield Wednesday, not, maybe not so much Sheffield Wednesday, but certainly QPR and Cardiff, they were games they would expect to win. So when they don't win them, the pressure almost is even more and the disappointment is felt even more. I think there's a confidence in their sort of defensive capabilities in terms of they sit their shape very well, they squeeze the middle, they don't leave many gaps, they frustrate the opposition, make them kind of sort of try and play out of their comfort zone a little bit. Um, the issues have been, and this is often on, sometimes where a sort of the confidence or, I mean, Liam Manning said after the West Brom defeat, they need a bit more arrogance to their, to their play because when they get to the final third, it's very tentative, a little bit too almost organised with what they're trying to do. They're not playing off the cuff enough. Thanks to James Piercy there uh, from the Bristol Post. Um, Interesting what he was saying um, about Bristol out of possession. They'll, they'll fancy themselves to, to be quite resolute this afternoon. Yeah, I think you mentioned they've lost the last four or five games. Five of the last six, yeah. Five of the last six, yeah. Uh, so, you know, going into this game, especially after a bit of a break, definitely uh, want to get a result, <laughs> you know. Um, and like you said there, it seems like Bristol perform better um, when they face teams who have better possession of the ball. You know, which suggests they're comfortable soaking up the pressure mm -hmm. and, and counter-attacking and, and, and performing well in that sense. So, I don't think it's going to be a straightforward game for Leicester. You know, obviously Leicester need to win um, and to be confident about that. But at the same time, Bristol City, you can't just write them off. Yeah, you, you can never write any off in the Championship. You know, they've lost five out of six, but you, you said the results then. Five of them have been by one goal. Mm -hmm. So they've been in the game. It's just probably been lucky not taking their own chances and getting back into the game. So I think it'll be a tough game. You know, Bristol City, as you said, you know, like to let the better teams have possession. And then if they do make mistakes, which Leicester can, are capable of doing, losing the ball in the final third, you know, Bristol City will then you know, enjoy that, you know, trying to win the ball back in the top half of the pitch and try and punish Leicester. But it's up to Leicester to play their own way. They've only got one way. And if it works, it looks brilliant. If it doesn't, then it looks a bit suspicious. But, you know, 
we're going to see more of that today. Yes, Liam Manning will be hoping that his yeah. Bristol City side um, can cause uh, somewhat of an issue this afternoon. Let's get a recap of today's team news. From a Leicester point of view, Enzo Maresca has made three changes to the side that lost to Chelsea in the FA Cup uh, a couple of weeks ago. Mads Hermanson, he returns. Jamie Vardy returns uh, as well as does James Justin. This is the 11. Then it's Hermanson in goal. Justin, Bass, Vestergaard and Chowdhury. Winks, Jewsbury Hall and Ndidi are the midfielders with Mavadidi and Fatawu supporting Jamie Vardy. From a Bristol City point of view, uh, a couple of familiar faces. One of those uh, starts and captains um, Bristol City this afternoon. That is Matty James, of course, in midfield. Andy King also on the bench. It's O'Leary in goal. Roberts, Dickey and Viner uh, across the back three. Pring and Tanner are the, mid, uh, the wing backs. Knight and James in midfield with Twine and Mehmeti. Mehmeti and Conway uh, is the uh, number 15, the striker for Bristol City then this afternoon. Right, speaking of strikers and games against <laughs> Bristol City. This is David Newton's favourite part of the show. He actually only says yes to doing shows in games he knows he's scored against the opposition. I've scored the games, then. Uh, we're pretty pretty much against, uh, because, News, your first championship goal for the Foxes came against uh, today's opponents, Bristol City, here at King Power Stadium. And Kenny trying to bring it away. Gallagher's taken it from him. Nugent... And it's gone in. It's his first goal in the championship for Leicester. And Gherkin, well, he made one good save earlier, but he couldn't keep this one out. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I think it was a galley winning the ball back. Little Cruyff turn, you know, back in the day <laughs> when I could turn. Tell you what, first goal from outside the box, not bad. Yeah, first try, I know, yeah, you know, yeah. cutting inside them right foot. Keeper's got to be better, though. Keep us on me out a lot there. So he, should, he should save it, see it again. Too much like, power on it. Yeah, you know, bit of a strike. First goal for Leicester. Yeah, I'll take that. You know, it was back until the game, but we, we lost the game. 2-1, I think. I think Nicky Mayna scored Where's twice. Kingy there? Yeah, Kingy, Ledge, Richie Wellens. Obviously, Wes weren't here then. He was a saviour when, when Nige came. <laughs> would it, would that have been that January that you'd have joined? Yeah, it? Yeah, you'd if have that been, was yeah. the August, then it must have been the January following. Yeah, that. I came in the January window. Yeah. Was it that? It wasn't that season, was it? Or was it? So, I, mean, you, I think you were season before, maybe. Yeah. Hi, sir. Hello. Yeah, sure. Must been, uh, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 he wasn't bad, though, was he, uh, to be fair to him? Uh, he's all right, you know. I'm a... <laughs> you know what? He was just fantastic, you know. Um, from when I came, you know, made him feel very, very comfortable. And uh, his type of strike and training, you don't want to play against because... Sometimes you just want to take it easy, and he'll be always running the channels, running everywhere. They're like, "News man, give yourself a break." But I think that's just his character, you know. He, he loves it. He's always got energy, even now. You know, probably when retired, you know, he's telling me all the stuff he's been doing. You know, he's, he's full of energy, so can't keep um, still. Can't keep, <laughs> needs to keep busy. It's great to see. Right, let's go from a striker then uh, to a goalkeeper because Mads Hermanson uh, has been speaking to our commentator Chris Parrott pitchside at Ashton Gate. October not top, um, which is a remarkable stat, but what does that do to the mindset ahead of this match today? Uh, nothing, nothing changes. We, uh, yeah, we have the same view on the game. We have this, yeah, we try to focus on ourselves and we know if we focus on, on one game at a time, we will hopefully reach our target in the end. You were one of those who went away on international duty. How has that affected the preparations, everyone coming back from all, all four corners of the world to Leicester? I think everyone used to break well. Uh, that's my feeling of the squad. That everybody, yeah, used it, used it in the best way for themselves to maybe get a break from the league and uh, yeah, catch some fresh air somewhere else. And uh, sometimes that's needed in football. So uh, so we are all 100% ready to go again. Uh, that was Mads Hermanson at uh, Pitchside at Ashton Gate looking ahead to this game. We've got a couple of minutes uh, before we hand over to to the commentary team. Hopefully he has a quiet afternoon today and we see Leicester get back to winning ways again. Yeah, no, he said he, he, he's had the break. He's been away international duty and uh, he's come back refreshed, you know, ready to go again. You know, he, he's so composed on the ball. He's so reliable. Even if he is under pressure, you know, he, he does make some important saves for, for the team. And But, you know, as, as, as defenders and, and the team, once you want your keepers to have a quiet day and usually if that happens, then 
usually win the game and hopefully that's the case today. And as, as we've already said, Wes, it's, it, it's a chance to put a statement out there to those teams that are playing later, both Ipswich and Leeds away from home um, this evening as well. So you never know if Leicester get that three points early, it can really put that pressure on. Yeah, I think, you know, players that have been away, um, we've looked at the form before the, the break and thought, you know, it, it's not the best. It's a great time to kind of have that, that point in the season to kind of go away, reset, come back and, and restart. So it's very, very important you start on the right foot, you know, getting a, the right result, setting a statement out to the, mm -hmm. to the other teams in the league, especially the one that's chasing that top spot. It's very important. I'm saying if Leicester win this, you got Ipswich playing a free. I think do Leeds play tonight as well. Both five thirty and then eight. You know, so they yeah. they got to wait a long time, you know, to play their game. So if Leicester win this, you know, the, the pressure's going to build, and hopefully we can do that today. And you know, hopefully the other two teams, you know, falter in, in, in their games later on. Hopefully so. Uh, that was the voice of David Nugent and of Wes Morgan. We'll hear <laughs> from those two uh, again at half time and again at full time where hopefully we'll be speaking uh, about another three points for the Foxes. It is, though, uh, now time to hand over to our commentary team uh, after a little explainer of what is available to you on Foxes Hub this afternoon. If you are watching on lcfc.com, just sit back and relax. If you are watching on social media, the live stream will finish shortly. If you want to continue enjoying our coverage, you'll need to head over to lcfc.com forward slash Foxes Hub and purchase one of our game passes. If you are watching in a territory where the game isn't live on TV, you'll be able to watch a live video stream on Foxes Hub. Please visit lcfc.com forward slash territories to check. If you can't find your location, Live audio commentary is still available. You'll need to have an lcfc.com account before you purchase your Game Pass. If you already have one, please sign in and select your product at lcfc.com forward slash Foxes Hub. Select the Buy button and you'll be taken to the payment page. Once you've followed the simple payment steps, press Continue at the bottom of the screen and you'll be taken to the Foxes Hub homepage. If you purchased a video pass, please select Watch Live from the Foxes Hub drop-down menu. If you purchased a Listen Live pass, please select Listen Live. If you purchased a seasonal or monthly video pass and the game is not being shown in your territory, please select Listen Live. If you are having a payment or technical issue, please email support at streamamg.com. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the match. <laughs> 